Karl Marx is a man whose name and ideas get bandied around as if everybody knew exactly who he was and what he said. But I think there's something missing from the conversation when most people talk about Marx. And that's how, by following some of his ideas, the world may have actually managed to save capitalism from the collapse that he predicted. I'm Luke Pierce and welcome to the Radical History Channel. Here we look at some of the historical figures and movements who wanted to improve the world. And in this video, we're going to cover one of the big hitters of social change. Hero to some, pariah to others, Karl Marx. Make sure you stick around until the end of the video because I'm going to make the argument that some of Marx's ideas may have actually saved capitalism in the West. Okay, so Marx was influenced by Hegelian dialectics, French utopian socialism and English economics. Don't worry, we don't need to know the details of what all of those mean. I certainly don't. Just that he had many influences when he was trying to understand this new economic system called capitalism. Now this capitalism thing was on everyone's mind in the 19th century. Machines, factories, urbanisation, technology, the world was changing dramatically, especially in Europe, and not always for the better. The old aristocratic class, who'd mainly inherited their titles and wealth, were being challenged by a new class of entrepreneurs and businessmen, making their money in industries. Marx called these people the bourgeoisie. Contrary to what you may have heard, Marx wasn't completely against the bourgeoisie. He saw them as a force for progress. With events like the English Civil War and the French Revolution, they'd succeeded in challenging absolute monarchies in Europe and had won civil liberties for themselves and for lower social classes. Marx could see that in many ways capitalism was better than the older system of feudalism and was an engine for industrial and technological progress in the 19th century. But for the vast majority of working people, daily life in this early 19th century capitalist system wasn't free at all. They worked long hours for low wages, had terrible health in dirty cities, and in many ways could look back at the old feudal system and think, do you know what? Life was actually better when we lived in small communities in the countryside. A group called Utopian Socialists wanted to improve things. They believed in winning people over to the idea of changing the system one at a time through discussion and gradual change. Whereas Marx believed that swathes of people could be persuaded to follow socialist ideas by appealing to their economic best interests and proposing a sudden and large-scale change to the economic system. Okay, so in his 1848 pamphlet, The Communist Manifesto, Marx is encouraging a workers' revolution. He called for graduated income tax, no private ownership or inherited wealth, centralised control of major industries like banking and transport, and free public education. But his major life's work, Das Kapital, is more like an analysis rather than a call to arms. Marx was primarily a philosopher and historian. Marx believed he was simply observing capitalism and describing what he saw, cycles of growth and crises, and a big class struggle between the owners of capital with their money and resources and the workers who have no choice but to work for capitalists. Part of this conflict was that workers make goods and in order to make a profit, capitalists sell those same goods for more money than they pay the workers who made them. Marx argued that this was exploitation. It's not that Marx thought that capitalists were evil. He recognised that they had stress and hardship in life just like everybody. The problem isn't bad people, the problem is that the capitalist system makes us all feel anxious by forcing us to put economic interests and an obsession with stuff before relationships. Marx called this commodity fetishism. By the way, if you feel like you're learning something here, I'd really appreciate if you could like this video below and maybe subscribe and comment while you're at it. So Marx said that naturally people gain meaning through their work and want to cooperate with each other. But the unnatural system of capitalism replaces this prehistoric egalitarianism with conflict. He believed that this ongoing conflict, combined with trends like urbanisation, would create class consciousness, where workers became aware of their situation and chose to do something about it. The key point, which so many people seem to miss, is that Marx thought the capitalist system was doomed to failure, regardless of what anyone said or did. He said a workers' revolution was inevitable, and here's why. In order to survive against the competition and maintain standards of living, capitalists or business people are always going to be motivated to maximise their profits. But profits are always under threat from new companies entering your industry and lowering prices, but also from uh, financial crises which periodically just have come in and affect capitalism and make a whole load of firms go bankrupt. So capitalists in these situations are going to be motivated to take measures which will help them recover profit margins. One way of doing this is simply to reduce the wages and conditions of their workers or just replace them with machines. Marx noted that if this kept on happening then eventually workers would reach a meagre level of existence where they could barely feed themselves. This was the reality that he saw getting ever closer in 19th century Western Europe. Once they reached a point of near starvation, workers would face a choice. Either continue to work and risk death through poverty, or risk death through a revolution and an overthrow of the economic system. Marx believed that 
If given the choice between certain destitution on the one hand and the possibility, however small, of living in a communist utopia on the other, workers would eventually always risk their lives for the latter. Right, let's do a quick recap because this is a really important point to grasp. So from a worker's point of view, your wages are being reduced by the capitalist, by your boss, right? Because he has to. He has to because he faces competition from other firms and because of financial crisis that risk bankrupting him and completely wiping out his company. So he's always motivated to reduce your wages to as low as he can. The problem is that eventually wages get so low where you're faced with the risk of death by starvation. And Marx's point is that when you reach this situation, you're going to die anyway. And so the logical choice in your mind will be to institute some kind of workers' revolution to give you at least the chance at living in some kind of future communist utopia, however small that chance may be. Marx said that it was inevitable. And for Marx, it was obvious that revolutions would first happen in the most advanced capitalist economies of the 19th century. Britain, France and Western Europe, because it was here that workers' conditions would be driven the lowest, the fastest. There would then follow a period of dictatorship of the proletariat, where society would be reorganised by some form of worker-controlled government, before the state could be abolished altogether, and then we could return to the happy-go-lucky communist society of prehistoric times. I'm sure you can see a few flaws with this line of thinking, which we'll cover in more depth in a future video. The important point here is that Marx believed that the internal tensions of capitalism would eventually result in its own destruction, and its replacement by a new system system known as the socialist mode of production, or communism. Marx's approach is known as historical materialism. It's the belief that you can study history scientifically, discern trends, and predict the outcome of social conflicts. Even though he believed that change was inevitable, Marx also believed that the world wasn't changed by ideas alone, but by activity and practice and he dedicated his life to ushering in this change. Why didn't this collapse of capitalism actually happen? Marx believed that workers' revolution was inevitable, regardless of what capitalists did or what he or anybody else did to encourage change. Why was he so wrong? Why was it that Western Europe and North America ultimately avoided communist uprisings? One argument is that Marx underestimated the ability of capitalism to make the masses richer in future through cheaper products. Another idea is that the working classes were somehow kept in a situation of false consciousness by propaganda and lack of education, which kept a lid on their innate revolutionary tendencies. But I'm more convinced by the argument that Marx missed capitalism's ability to reform itself. You can make the argument that capitalism saved itself just in time with something called the welfare state. Starting in the second half of the 19th century and continuing way into the 20th, advanced economies in Europe and America created a series of measures to set a floor under workers' conditions, using safety regulations, maximum working hours, minimum wage laws, and investing in public education and health. These measures ultimately raised the living standards of Western workers and arguably saved capitalism, while more impoverished workers in Russia went for communism. It's not that the welfare state ended poverty entirely, but in order to save capitalism, it didn't need to. It just needed to raise living standards enough to take away that choice that Marx assumed the majority of workers would face between destitution and revolution. There's a couple of ironies here. Firstly, many of these measures, like income taxes and free education, were things that Marx himself had advocated. So you can say that the implementation of Marx's own policies had given capitalism more life and reduced motivation for the communist revolution that he was looking forward to. The second irony is that plenty of people today attack the very idea of the welfare state. They want to roll back workers' rights, reduce health benefits and undermine public institutions because typically they believe that capitalism should be completely free to operate, more like it was in Marx's day in the 19th century. But it's arguably these very laws and services which saved capitalism from itself and prevented the communist overthrow of the system which Marx had anticipated. I hope you enjoyed this video about Karl Marx and perhaps learnt something beyond some of the stereotypical messages that you might have heard about Marx in the past. I think he's a really fascinating character in terms of what he was saying in the 19th century about the system around him and in terms of how some of his ideas are still applicable today. Although, of course, there's a huge amount that Karl Marx got wrong, as I hope that this video has implied. And I hope to do a future video about things that Marx got right and and things that he got wrong. So please make sure you subscribe to the Radical History channel so you don't miss that in future and also press the notification bell so that you hear about future updates. While you're at it you might want to give me a thumbs up like by clicking the thumbs up below and if you have time why not comment on the video below? Tell me what you think about it. I read every single one of them.